leave questions to the panel, okay? Because because we're slightly over time. It was Sorry very, about that. <laughs> no problem. It's what's it's expected. Of, in fact, almost. <laughs> okay. So uh, let let's go on to the next talk. So the next talk will be by Bob Kowalski, and who I think is very well known. He's one of the founders of Logic Programming. Um, he was uh, at the University of Edinburgh, a period college in London, also um, many, many things. He was one of the pioneers who developed uh, SLD resolution and so on and so on. So I think he doesn't need that much more introduction. So he's going to talk about logical English, which is a kind of controlled natural language. And so I'll give the floor to Bob. The floor, thank you. The floor <laughs> I'll, is uh, I'll, I'll, keep, floor. I'll keep my seat if I if I may. Um, anyway, for now for something totally different, I suppose. A bit of logic, a bit of English, and a bit of computing. Now, how do I move my my slides? Slide one, slide two. Can you see my second slide? Ah. Uh, do you see my second slide? Yes. Yeah. Hello. Yes. Yes. We I'm see. Not quite it. sure. See it. Okay. So, what is um, logical English? Um, it's both a logic and a computer language. It's uh, it's also a version of English. Let me see. I'm having trouble seeing my own screen. Right. Based on logic programming. Uh, different from logic programming, but like the real world, it has destructive change of state without frame axioms. Um, although it's intended as a general purpose computer language, it is especially suitable for uh, representing legal regulations because in part it's inspired by the language of law and the fact that law is uh, a kind of programming language for regulating the behavior of people as opposed to uh, machines. The idea is that it should be readable without training in mathematics, computing, or logic in the same way that well-written legislation or legal documents are also readable without training in, in legal matters. On the other hand, it may not necessarily be easy to write. Wri writing well, whether you're writing uh, a program, whether you're writing uh, a novel, whether you're writing a textbook, whether you're writing uh, legislation, is not easy. On the other hand, because it is uh, so much closer to the original source from which you are working, the thoughts that are in your head and also the conventional language you might use, it, it should be easier to write than, than a conventional logic program, although it's based on logic programming. So I'll, I'll give you a little bit of uh, background why I've uh, taken this uh, topic so seriously. <clears throat> it goes back to my uh, traumatic first year at the University of Chicago when I failed the English writing skills uh, placement examination. Having been a, a bit of a star at high school, uh, only to discover at university level that my English was absolutely uh, unintelligible uh, because I had been trained as a poet. Um, I, I was trained to uh, write sentences that sounded good but had no meaning because the meaning was there to be discovered by others. Uh, and I would relish the use of ambiguous pronouns, which also, uh, obviously contributed to the difficulty of determining my intended meaning if I ever had one in the first place. Well, uh, I worked very hard to improve my English and I like to think that I succeeded to some extent at least and I then uh, hoped to uh, transfer some of my skills to my children and as a result of which I, I uh, started some logic lessons for my 11 year old uh, for 11 year olds in my local in the local school and that was actually quite successful for about eight years or so there was actually a, uh, a series of, of workshops or little conferences called prologue uh, education group uh, but that uh, fell apart when the Japanese fifth generation project uh, put a hold in things uh, but I uh, still managed to keep up my uh, my enthusiasm, partly because when we worked on the British Nationality Act, I could see that the English of the British Nationality Act was as good and better than most uh, uh, computer programs uh, and indeed computer uh, program specifications. It was written beautifully, precisely, clearly, uh, and had much better structure than any 
uh, program that I had ever had any encounter with. And that inspired me to think in terms of uh, natural language as potentially um, uh, an alternative to symbolic languages that people had been using for computing. Uh, and in particular, the, the closeness of the language of the British Nationality Act to the language of logic programs was, was a, a, another inspiration. Um, before I left Imperial College, um, I started a series of writers workshops for PhD students. Uh, and these focused on uh, PhD uh, abstracts, uh, dissertation abstracts. And we, we uh, discussed how to improve those abstracts by making their meaning more clear using such devices as uh, parallel syntax for parallel ideas, um, old information before new information, and generally using logical concepts at a practical level. Uh, very recently, I became aware of work on um, smart contracts and saw that the languages being used for smart contracts are very low level, either imperative languages or functional languages, and very remote from the languages that people use in uh, writing legal documents. And that inspired uh, our work on uh, logical contracts and logical English. Well, first of all, there is related work. And uh, the closest related work is in the field of controlled natural languages, which are implemented in Prolog, um, starting with ACE, uh, developed primarily by uh, Norbert Fuchs, and uh, followed up by his student, uh, Schwitter. Uh, but these are intended not as a general purpose computer language, but rather for general knowledge representations. The, the typical examples that you see uh, are quite different from the ones that people write when they write programs. You won't see common denominator, for example, uh, among their examples. Uh, very recently, you can see 2020, two uh, very recent uh, entries into the market for uh, smart contract languages are based on logic programming. Uh, but these are, again, uh, not focused on general purpose computing, but rather on domain specific languages for uh, either legal uh, contracts or legal uh, documents as in the case, uh, as in the first case of blocks or uh, on smart contracts as in the case of Lexon. The closest work to the work I'm going to present here is that by um, uh, Schwitter and, and his student Guy, uh, Peng uh, as a sugared up syntax for ASP. So what makes this closer is that it is, a, it is uh, intended as a syntax for ASP. Now, uh, so that deals with that. Can you all see this? Are you all still here? I can't see anybody, but can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. And we <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Okay, so, so let, let, let's look at what we write when we write mathematical logic. So th this is a typical mathematical logic sentence. And I won't bother you to uh, try to understand it because, but this is what we would write and do write in, in controlled uh, logic, uh, logical English. The balance, in an, the balance in an account is in an amount B2, let's say, at a time, let's say T2. If um, an amount A is transferred into the account from another account at a time T1, which is immediately before T2, and the balance in the account at time T1 was B1, and B2 is the sum of the old amount and the new amount. So you can see that we can combine um, symbolic uh, names of variables with, with um, uh, more English-like articles to represent variables. When you, say so the account, just, when you say the account, how do you know which account you're referring to? On the third line? I'll come to that, I think, in a minute. Okay. I'll come to that in a minute. Ah, because we're, we're talking of variables. So ba basically, very, there are two ways to represent variables. So either they can be represented by symbols x, y, b1, b2, or they can be signaled by an article a, uh, n, or the before a common noun. And the common noun then represents the type of the variable. And the first time you see uh, the common noun preceded by the indefinite article a uh, or n, then you have the first use of that variable. All later uses in the same sentence are referred to by the definite article the. So we could rewrite this. Um, so we could have said the balance in an account, um, oh, what shall we call it, uh, x. The balance in account x is an amount 
And we don't have to say what the amount is, we could just say an amount, because we have two different ways of referring to variables. And all of these variables are universally quantified, uh, and their scope is the sentence in which they occur. Uh, notice we don't use words such as all for all. We don't use all because that requires uh, all, all, of, all of, we, we, because the word all requires a plural. And so we avoid plurals because that way we can avoid the, the need for a dictionary in the same way that a uh, logic programming language like Prolog or ASP would not require a dictionary in order to um, give you the name, to move back and forth between different ways of representing the name of a typed variable. Um, well, the plan is, um, and we've made a little bit of a start on this, to develop L logical English as a series of extensions starting from this basic form, which is very close to Prolog. Um, and we can, uh, by a series of transformations, somewhat in the spirit of Chomsky's transformational grammars, we can uh, introduce even uh, more natural syntax, still trying to uh, maintain lack of ambiguity. So these languages are all intended to be unambiguous. So the balance in an account uh, becomes um, A plus B when an amount A is transferred into the account from another account and the balance in the account is an amount B. Now notice that this avoids the use of any reference to time. So this, when we use the word when, the word when uh, is implicitly um, referring to at a lower level, uh, the fact that the times are related to one another in the, in the manner that we saw in the previous example. So um, to reduce ambiguity, we obviously have no pronouns such as he, she, or it. Uh, and uh, our intention is to eliminate the need for a dictionary. So there's, 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 there's hopefully no dictionary needed for any of this. Uh, and all nouns and verbs are expressed in the singular. That, that's why we don't use the word all. Um, I'm also hoping that we can express all verbs in the present tense uh, and all verbs in the active, but that may prove to be difficult. So we're still working on this. Now, very interesting is the fact that any variable in the conclusion that is not in conditions is existentially quantified with wide scope. What does this mean? Just like in um, existential data log, for example, if you have a variable in the conclusion of a clause, which is not in the conditions of the clause, then this existentially quantified. For example, an event of a person acquiring citizenship of the land of Oz occurs on a day, and these are all variables and of, of type. So we have a variable, say, E of type event, uh, a variable uh, for person of type person. So these are all implicit. And when we compile this into a logic programming language, these variables would, would become apparent. But notice that when we say an event of a person acquiring citizenship occurs on a day, if the person is born in a place on the day and the place is in the land of Oz, the natural way to read this um, sentence and the variable an event is uh, existentially quantified. That is to say, we don't, it is not all events occur, but rather there exists an event, uh, which is a function, which is a function of the person, it's a function of the place, of the day, and of the day. Yeah. So basically, uh, that means we have wide scope. We can refer to this person in, in other sentences. We could say, for example, the person celebrates the event if the person lives in the, end, uh, in the land of Oz. So the event is um, now having wider scope than universally quantified variables. And this, of course, is through scolarization. So the natural way to implement this is to eliminate the uh, existential quantifier through scolarization, which in turn allows us to refer to that same existentially quantified variables outside of the same sentence. These are technical details, but the, but the interesting point, I think, is that natural language here is a, is a better guide to um, how to design computer languages than uh, computing theory. I mean, it, yeah. Anyway, there have been three um, implementations in the last few years. The, the first one was done about three years uh, ago uh, as part of the, our work on this logical contracts uh, project. Uh, and I've had two, two master's degree students working over the last two summers. Uh, I'll show you examples taken from these, these three uh, domains now. 
somebody may have to um, monitor my timekeeping. Anyway, th this language of logical English is, is an extension of, of logic programming in Prolog, uh, implemented in Prolog, but it's actually a sugared syntax for the language LPS, logical production systems, which extends logic programming by introducing reactive rules, which are like condition action rules, but have a logical semantics. Uh, they're very, yeah, I'll, I'll say more about that later. And, and we write them in this somewhat different form, a form that's more, yes. You have one minute, someone, okay? One minute, oh, I was afraid of that, okay. So I shall, <laughs> well, I shall too, finish. And, very nicely. <laughs> okay, I shall finish this. So basically, Logical English uh, is built on top, not only of logic programming, but also LPS, and it and allows us to write um, sentences uh, such as this, which um, ha have been studied in the blockchain world uh, when writing smart contracts. Uh, but we could write their conclusions either in the declarative or in the imperative, and the logical semantics is the same. Uh, we can also have um, we can also exploit the meta level features of of logic programming as as you find them in Prolog, so that the same predicate can occur at the object level with a, as a predicate with the predicate symbol can also occur uh, at the meta level by means of a function symbol. So this this is necessary in order to talk about a transaction and to state as one of the conditions that the transaction has been. Um, expressed in a confirmation. We use the event calculus ontology without any frame axioms. Um, and this is an example from a simplified loan agreement. In the logical English form, we, we basically say that when the event of the end of the day occurs, then uh, a requirement becomes defaulted. If it was almost defaulted, the lender uh, delivers a notice to the borrower saying that you were almost defaulted and the requirement is incurred within three days. I've got a little example uh, which I did this morning on the greatest common denominator. I, I think it's, a, it's an improvement over um, Leslie Lamport's uh, <laughs> representation. It's written in English, it's unambiguous, it's computer executable. I've actually tried running it in NLPS uh, and uh, uh, what do I get? I get this output. Uh, with two assignments and uh, the greatest common denominator is returned as an output at the end. I have a paper which is coming out. Uh, please email me if you're interested. This is one of the most boring papers you'll ever read in your life. Uh, it's about international swaps and derivatives and uh, don't tell me you didn't want to know about it because neither did I. Anyway, we should stop teaching children to think like computers we should teach computers to think like humans. We should start teaching children logic and writing skills. We should follow the lead of legal scholars and stop using complex language, which is understandable only by technicians and use plain language understandable by ordinary people. Any more? That's it. Thank you, Thank you very much. We can give some virtual applause, right? Okay, so we'll, we'll leave the questions for the panel. So now let's go to the final talk. So I will have to stop your screen share.